Football is back. They are returning the weekend of October 23rd and 24th. It was August 11th that they announced that they were suspending all football activity that has now been reversed based on a variety of factors, including new medical information and new testing availability. Again, the Big Ten is coming back to play beginning the weekend of October 23rd and 24th. We have some of the statement for you here that was released by the conference. The Big Ten Council of Presidents and Chancellors adopted significant medical protocols, including daily antigen testing, enhanced cardiac screening, enhanced data-driven approach when making decisions about practice and competition. They say it was a unanimous decision to return the weekend of October 23rd and 24th. The best player in that conference, oh, there's more. The decision was based on information presented by the Big Ten Return to Competition Task Force, a working group that was established by the commissioner. Let's move on to the tweet. We got Justin Fields, who tweeted, <laughs> very simply tweeted, let's go. I'm seeing all this stuff for the first time as you are, as this news is literally developing as we speak. Let me bring in one of the great players in the history of Big Ten football, our very own Desmond Howard, along with Neek here to uh, get some reaction. Des, the floor is yours. We, you were on my show the morning after it was announced they were shutting down. Now here we are a month later and the decision has been changed. What's your reaction this morning? Great news for college football. Great news for college game day. Great news for everybody. I, you know, all we're waiting for now is the Pac-12 to make the same decision and then we can get the whole band back together again. This is great. I, I'm so excited to see this, uh, this news come down the pipeline, but this was something that we could see um, happening because of what happened out there in the Pac-12. We had Larry Scott on game day, and when he was on game day, he um, made a comment about how they had made a deal with, uh, I think it's called Quidel, a, a, a laboratory to get um, the, the rapid testing. So he knew it was just a matter of time uh, before the Big Ten made a, a similar deal. And that's what it all came down to, Greeny, about getting the rapid testing and making sure that, these health, that, that, that the health of the players was, um, was okay. I'm getting a lot of this information sort of as I go. But Desmond, it does appear they will start the weekend of October 23rd and 24th. They will try and squeeze eight games into eight weeks in their schedule, then play a conference championship on December 19th with the college football playoff selection show the following day, the 20th. What do you think of that scheduling and the idea that the champion who emerges from that will have a chance, whether it's Ohio State or anybody else, will have a chance to get into the college football playoff? You know, Green, that's very interesting because we had um, Coach Ryan Day, Ohio State's head coach, on the show um, last Saturday. And his target date for this whole thing to work would have been the previous week, like October 17th, I believe. Mm -hmm. So for them to start a week later, it makes me um, wonder if they're going to be able to pull this off in time based on the schedule that Ryan Day laid out for us as far as when the Big Ten Championship game will be played. And also heard Heather Dinich earlier this morning, she uh, repeated the same schedule. So for them to have to start a week later, it puts a lot of strain on them as a conference in order to get those games in that short period of time and make sure they're still allowed or still able to uh, participate in the college football playoff. I'm really curious to see how this plays off. But Greeny, I spoke to Kevin Warren yesterday, and I could tell by his spirit that things were going in the right direction. He had commented on the, um, the test, the rapid testing. He said that we always followed the science. We never wavered for that. And let me even back up. It's not even Kevin Warren's decision. It's the chancellors and presidents of the universities of the Big Ten who get more knowledge and more experience in the sciences and the medical fields, and they're the ones that had to be comfortable with whatever medical information that was laid out in front of them to move forward. But they always stuck to their guns when it came to science and medicine and the health of the student athletes. And I will repeat again, the president of your university, Desmond, at uh, Michigan, is an epidemiologist. So obviously well-versed in all the exactly. things we're talking about here. Dominic Foxworth, you played at Maryland. It was not part of the Big Ten then. It is now. What is your reaction to this news? Uh, I think that it's, um, it's fair for us all to be excited. And I, I do think that the Big Ten handled this better than several other conferences in the country. However, I do think that while we're all celebrating now, the coaches, the players even are celebrating, and the fans and all the people who cover the sport, it's a very big day, an exciting day. But I do also 
wonder how different this would be if the players had some representation because my concern is not necessarily for the things that they put into place right now because I think all the precautions they put into place right now, while they will um, help the players stay healthy, those pre precautions are in place to preserve the season. I'd be much more concerned given that the players are technically not employees if there are some long-term health impacts. And there are hundreds of players who are going to be exposed. There will be long-term health impacts for some of those players. And I don't think that we're going to remember those players' names. We're not going to care much about those players 10, 20 years from now if they have issues. And we're going to look back on all this fun that we had, which I don't want to be the one raining on the parade, but no one is actually looking out for these players in this moment. I think it looks as if they are looking out for the players by saying that they're putting all this testing in place, but no one is actually looking out for the players. They're doing what's in their best interest. Some players who are going to head to the NFL may benefit from this, but the vast majority of the players probably would have been better off if they did not have a season and they were not exposed to this. It's one way of looking at it, and obviously we will keep an eye on the medical piece of it. Desmond, let me ask you one football question. Um, as we, as, if we had done a preview of the season before all the things that happened happened, where would you have thought Ohio State belongs among the best teams in the country? Um, at the top, you know, there's no doubt about that. When you got a, a quarterback like Justin Fields leading your team, Ryan Day has done an extraordinary job taking over for Urban Meyer. Uh, they have great players coming back on defense. It would, they would have been at the top uh, up there with the Clemsons and the Alabamas, no doubt about that. That's why you see Ryan Day and, t and coaches like that out there clamoring to get this season. Ryan Day understood he had a team, well, he has a team, that can compete for a national championship, at least by, you know, in his own mind. So I would say they would have been right, at, right up there at the top with Clemson and Alabama. Okay. I, guys, thank you so much. I've run out of show. I could keep talking about this <laughs> for hours. Neek, thank you. Desmond, <laughs> thank you for jumping in again. Huge news. The Big Ten mm -hmm. announcing officially they're coming back to play the weekend of October 23rd and 24th. Meanwhile, I'll take a Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.